Yo, Elliot, I got an opportunity for a promotion at work right now, but I'm not sure if I want to go for it. It'd be a big step up in responsibility, and I'm hesitant that it may take away from the other areas of my life that I'm building, i.e. the gym, my side hustle. On the bright side, it would be a big step up in pay and an opportunity to advance my sales and leadership skills. If I apply for the job, I would have a strong chance of getting it. What do you recommend doing when faced with a big life decision like this? Well, I have an opinion on what I would do if I were you, but your question isn't, what should I do? Which is fine. <laughs> your question is, what do you recommend doing when faced with a big life decision like this? And so when I'm faced with a big life decision like this, the thing I've learned works best is to step back. My mom used to say, let go and let God step back, step back, stepping back does a number of things. Stepping back means I don't need to do it, that everything is unfolding perfectly for me. I don't have to make this happen. That's a, that's a huge breakthrough for me and for a lot of the guys in this program, because I've been talking about this for years, allowing things to unfold for you. And in a way, things are actually unfolding for you. And if we look, and here's another thing that I do, try to look at things rightly. Try to look at things without uh, imagination, without, without, try to look at things real, like realistically, right? What do I mean by that? Well, what is actually happening right now? Well, you have one thing that's actually happening. You have a opportunity for a promotion. You'd get more money, you'd have better op opportunity. That's like legit, that actually is here, that is available to you or almost available to you. And even that you have to take into consideration that the fact that it's not actually available to you, it's almost available to you. So you know what happens? There's a funny joke, Chris Rock says, <laughs> I think it's Chris Rock. He says that uh, women will come home and wanna talk to you about something that almost happened. <laughs> Is this joke in one of his stand up? He said, Women will come home and they want to talk to you all about what almost happened, right? And where a man, you know, will only talk about what happens according to this joke. And so, you know, they'll come home and they'll be like, Oh, you know, let me tell you what almost happened today. And they get all very emotional and they go through the whole rigmarole. And then when it really boils down to it, you ask the man, or you, the man is there asking her, like, Well, what happened? Well, nothing happened. What what are, you, what are you worried about? What are you talking about? What is this rigmarole all about? <laughs> it's a little strange, but it's because women get into their feelings about things. Right now, in a way, you're getting into your feelings about this because there's actually nothing that happened yet. There's something that could happen. There's a potential for something. But from what I understand, you didn't even apply for this job yet. You said there's a strong chance of you getting it, but it's not a guarantee. So right now, in a way, you're sort of mulling over what almost happened or what might happen, right? When I say be real, what I mean is, well, cross that bridge when you get to it, right? Like you could apply for the job. You could make yourself crazy trying to decide whether or not I should apply for this job. But the bottom line is you didn't even apply for the job yet and you don't even know if you're gonna get it. What if you apply for the job? What if you rack your brain and you go crazy and you're like, oh man, what do I do? And then like you, you and you're trying to paint the picture of the future, like what's gonna happen and all this. And then you apply for the job and then you don't get it. Then we know what happens. You went through all that frustration for nothing. That's like when I was getting this house because, you know, I'm 42 years old right now. So I've made a lot of the dumb mistakes. I've done the things that I'm telling you guys not to do. Right. Somebody asked me that in one of my video, videos the other day, because I'm saying sex before marriage is not a good idea. Right? I give you all my reasons why. But he wants to know, hey, Elliot, what about you? You had sex before marriage. Well, yeah. And that was a mistake. Right. I can't sit here and tell you do what I did because I did it. I got to sit here and tell you, this is what I learned from my experience. Now, you can do whatever you want, but I can't say that you should do it because I did it, right? Just because I screwed up, just because I made a mistake or because I did things the way I used to do them, I've upgraded my experience. I've upgraded my wisdom. So now I got to speak to you from a different place. I used to do that shit all the time. 
And right when I started really waking up to this not too long ago, right? Less than five years ago. When I moved into this house, when I moved into the to ranch, I remember being very adamant with myself and my wife that I, I, there will be no emotional attachment to this house at all. We were, because it was like, it was just, it was, it was just an opportunity. It was just something that was on paper. And it was just something that we're kind of, even as we were going through all the steps, you know, you know, trying to get financing, all that kind of stuff. I was like, I didn't, if, I didn't dream about the house at all. I was like, I'm just going to watch what happens. And as each step, sort of unfolds, I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, that's interesting, hmm, that's interesting. Boom, I'm here. At no point did I get into this tendency to want to build castles in the sky. Oh, wow, what if, and how about, right? All is what if, what if, what if? So I didn't play that game at all. Easiest thing that ever happened to me in my life because I stopped, I stopped all the mind chatter, all the monkey brain stuff, right? Same thing with you in this situation, right? Apply for the job. There's no question that you should apply for the job. That's my opinion. Let me give you to my give you my opinion. My opinion is there's no there's no harm in applying for the job. That's the other thing, right? There's no harm in it. There's no harm in asking. There's no harm in applying. Just apply for it. When it shows you what is happening after you apply, like if you get the job or not, then now you have a decision. Right now you don't have a decision. You have no decision to make. <laughs> that, it's a no brainer to apply for the job in my opinion, that's not the decision. But then it's not until you get the job or don't get the job, that then you have to cross a bridge. You're trying to cross a bridge before you get to it. There's no bridge to cross yet. You don't know what's gonna happen, right? The other thing is, you know, you're talking about uh, taking away from other areas in your life, which include your gym and your side hustle. You know, you heard the saying, a, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Like right now, you literally are about to, which is, you know, you don't even know yet, right? Again, all this is contingent upon what happens after you apply. So you need to apply. But all this is contingent upon a bird, a bird being placed in your hand if you get the job, right? There's a bird in your hand. And you got to take that bird in the hand, especially if you're thinking about letting it go for two in the bush. Two in the bush basically means you don't have those birds yet. You didn't catch those birds yet. You're trying to catch those birds, but you got this one right here, right? This one is worth two of those. You might see two of those, right? You got your gym and your side house, whatever it is. You might be like, well, I got this bird. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this bird go so I go chase these other two birds. And you know what could happen? Those two birds could scatter. And that's usually what happens. You go after the two birds, psst, they scatter. And it's like, what? Uh, I lost the bird. And, uh, and then you, and you're left with nothing, right? So that's another, that's, another, yeah, that's another strategy even for making big life decisions, right? And, as a, and look, you're younger than you, me. Most of you guys are younger than me. As you get old, you get, as I get old, and most people, you get conservative, right? Because you don't have time to be chasing birds no more, right? Like if I got a bird in my hand, I'm like, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have any motivation to go chasing birds. I got a bird in my hand, right? But when you're young, and I totally understand, I get it. When I was, when I was, when I was young, I was chasing birds in the bush and I'd lose all three. I've had that happen. I don't, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to settle, right? That might even sound crazy. I know it sounds crazy. I know I sound crazy when I say it because if, so, if I said this to somebody, you know, 20 years ago, I would be like, all right, boomer. <laughs> so I know, I know. But the wisdom that has brought me the idea that settling and uh, what's the word? Uh, that they use, they say you should never be content. I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe that anymore. In fact, that's one of my greatest prayers is to God, allow me to be content. Allow me to be content. Because what happens when you're content? You stop reaching and scratching and trying and busting your head open for shit that usually is useless or doesn't even unfold. I just seen it too many times with myself. I want to be content I don't know, guys. I want to be content. I want to settle. 
right? And that doesn't mean settle for what's beneath you or beneath me. I know what I'm worth, but I don't feel like I always have to be chasing more birds, right? If you got a bird in your hand, you got a good job, you have an opportunity, you can make more money. Maybe it's okay to settle, settle, right? Because you know what happens when you settle? You build a foundation. And that's one of the things that lacks in most men's today. Most people lives today, particularly millennials and Gen Z, you guys don't have any foundation. And the reason why is number one, you've come into a world that is foundationless, that doesn't, that doesn't honor or respect or, uh, or validate. It doesn't value foundation. It values, values flying. We live in a world that values flying, high flying. Uh, one of the guys in the Discord group was asking me before about a, a phrase in um, Iron John where he talks about, you know, um, you know, uh, let me go read it, actually. He says. Uh, 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 let's see. It was in the reading group with Slippy. Slippy. So. One of the phrases in the book that the guys are, you know, there's a reading group in the uh, Discord. He says, any ideas on such as son's attempt to redeem the endarkened father by becoming enlightened? He says, I'm a little confused on the subject. And I wrote, this whole idea of becoming enlightened in order to redeem the uh, endarkened father. He says, it's about that. I say it's about the tendency, and it's not come from me. This comes from the book. It's about the tendency for a young man to become what he calls a high flyer. The story of Icarus plays this motif out perfectly. The idea that a young man needs to travel to great heights, achieve great things, become something special in order to overcome his father's lowliness. The negative aspect to this is that he becomes ungrounded and lives in an imaginary world with constant seeking of novelty and mystical experience. Chopping wood and carrying water, he sees as work beneath him. That was my response. And it's the same thing here right now, basically what I'm saying. We live in a, in a generation, we're a generation that doesn't like to be grounded. We want to be high flyers, right? Taking the next thing. But you know what happens at a certain point? You look at your life and you're like, you don't see any, you don't see anything firm, anything solid. I know, look, because I'm the same way, I'm just like, yeah, I do the same, I'm stupid. I do the same thing, right? I'm a high flyer. But because of it, I've, I've let go of so many birds in my hand chasing two in a bush and been left with nothing. There are so many aspects of my life. I look back and I'm like, damn, why didn't I just see that through? Why didn't I just stick with that? Why didn't I settle? It's because of the it's a feminacy. It's a tendency to always think there's something grander. There's something better. Right. And so I just, I just warn against that. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying be aware, be careful of that. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.